Welcome to, to this training. Welcome back for a number of you who are here physically. Welcome to those who are online. Uh, let's proceed. Uh, I will let, uh, so my name is Mohamed Esfi. Uh, sorry, we start with the introductions. Behind me you can see Sandra. Uh, and then we also have a number of other co-trainers helping us in this training that we will introduce along the training. And uh, maybe we can go fast on the agenda because the most important is to address the points. But first we will give you a quick definition of what do we mean by e-commerce engineering. It may sound overwhelming, it may sound complicated, but actually it's something that you already know. And we'll show you why. The second part is that we want to share with you how, uh, how you can do using specific tools uh, to find an opportunity in the market. Welcome. To find an opportunity in the market. So it will, it will be about what are the beginner mistakes that you need to avoid. Uh, and then we will present to you some tools and how much they cost and how they work. And then we will do a case study. We will show you how we're going to do it for this particular product right here. And then after that, we will do an exercise. You can sit with one of our colleagues here and do it for real using our tools, the tool that we are presenting, so that you can really have a real insight on how you can find an opportunity, how you can find prices and data about your potential business. Yeah? Uh, and then we will uh, start. So once we identify the opportunity, we will now look at what are the costs because sometimes you may sell something at a, at a good price somewhere, but then you have logistic costs, payment costs, marketing costs. And the idea is that we want to teach you and show you how you can quickly understand your costing for the marketplaces or the marketing side, but also the cost of logistics. And today we have uh, uh, with us Idelphonse Prince from Iposita. Uh, so they are in logistics every day and e-commerce. So he will also give us some insights and we will study different ways on how to use Iposita and other logistic providers. And there is one very important thing that you need to understand before starting to do logistics is what we call volumetric weight or actual weight. And we will explain what, what that is and then we will do an exercise again to find the volumetric weight of this product and find the actual weight of this product so that you understand what it means. And then we will show you what is the difference between these two weights because it will impact the cost of shipping. Yeah. And finally, before we open the questions and answers, we will give you a bit of homework because this is a two session. This is like a crash course. And then we have a second session if you wish to attend. It's not obligatory, but it's very useful, which will be like more practical again. So uh, we will give you some homework before you leave. Yeah. And then we will take questions. So let's begin. Let's go to the next slide, please. All right. So we start with point one. Yeah. What is e-commerce engineering? Nothing complicated. Let's go to the next slide, please. You all know avocado, yeah? <laughs> so it works with any commodity, yeah? Coffee, uh, lemon, whatever. It always works the same, even with services, with uh, digital, digital products, physical products. When you have something to sell, uh, what we mean by e-commerce engineering, it's very simply, how do you position yourself as a seller in a crowded marketplace with so many sellers and competitors and they all sell at different prices. So they give different offers, different prices and uh, the result of e-commerce engineering for you is to find the best price cost situation that will allow you to make enough sales, volume sales, but also with good margins. That's why we do this exercise because sometimes we just go to the market, we don't do any study, you know, and we go just by luck but luck sometimes doesn't play in our favor, yeah? So that's what we want to show you, is that it's already happening here in, in uh, Kigali and in Rwanda. If we look at, this, at the evolution of the price of simple avocado, one piece, one unit of avocado, even the farmers in Kabuga, they need to invest costs to plant and then harvest the avocado. So they have costs and then they sell it at, let's say, 125 francs. So if you go to the farm, maybe you can buy it at 125 francs, yeah? But then someone is going to take it from the farm and bring it to Nyabugogo here at the entrance of Kigali, yeah? Just the fact that you bring it from Kabuga to Nyabugogo, you invested logistic costs, therefore you can sell higher price because the market there is going to pay more. So you see the price already doubled. And then someone, even in Kigali, I heard that there are some entrepreneurs they go in the morning and buy fresh, uh, fresh vegetables and fresh fruits from, from uh, Nyabugogo and then they run to Kimironko market to sell them more expensive. Yeah, this is exactly e-commerce engineering. It's commerce engineering. They do it in real life. 
So when you go to Kimi Ronko, again, you invest some costs, again, logistics, packaging, and so on, and then you reach Kimi Ronko, you can, maybe you can double the price. And then someone buys it from Kimi Ronko, bring it to Sawa City. Boom, you double again, yeah? So it's the same with, with e-commerce. With e-commerce, you guys are the producer, or you are a reseller, and the equivalent of Sawa City online is to sell on Amazon, America. Because that's where you can sell at a higher price. But of course, Amazon takes a commission. Sawa City takes a commission, yeah? That's what we want to show you. Like, how can you go to the most and how can you find the best positioning for your product or service, sell it at the best price, but know that you're going to make money. Because if you don't understand your costs, it may look like you're selling at a high price. When you deduct your costs, you're losing money, yeah? So that's, that's e-commerce engineering. Isn't it simple, yeah? My grandmother, she does this. Peace be upon her when she was alive. <laughs> she would go to the market, you know, she buy from one market, she bring it to another market. She was doing this business engineering, yeah? yeah. So nothing really like uh, complicated, you know what it is. So let's start and let's look at how it's done on, online and for e-commerce. Uh, let so this is about the definition. Let's now move to the next slide. Um, so, before we start um, talking about um, the costs, yeah, because that's easy to speak about the costs, what we want you to think first is the opportunity. Because if you don't identify the opportunity, every cost will look too big. So, whatever we tell you in terms of logistics, payment fees, unless you can see that there is an opportunity, it will always look expensive. So, that's why we want to start with the opportunity. And how can you identify an opportunity? First, you have to avoid what we call the beginner's mistake, yeah? What are the two main beginner mistakes? The first one is that sometimes we, have, we are overconfident about our product. We think that it's the best because we've been building it for six months, a year. Um, and then we think that we can sell it anywhere and we can sell it at any price. We're so confident our, about our product, that's a big mistake, yeah? Because then we don't do the proper research and then we, uh, we make some mistakes. The second big mistake is the reverse, is not we're not confident enough. We are afraid that our product is not good enough. We are afraid that people uh, will not want it. Uh, and also, as a result, we are trying to sell it at the cheapest price, yeah? So if you sell it very cheap, you don't have enough margin to pay for anything in terms of cost. So these are the two main mistakes that are very easy uh, to solve if you have tools, if you do some research. Let's go to the next one. So we can solve these two problems uh, in a simple way. Even if you don't have money, you can do it yourself. That's the right column, DIY. Do some research, yeah? There are analytical tools, but also we as humans, we can do research, yeah? So before you go and sell something, uh, can you go into a website? I think you said that there are many marketplaces in Rwanda, yeah? So there is Rwanda Mart, there is Olado, uh, there are many websites. Go and look how is it sold, how much. Uh, do some analysis on other competitors that sell maybe in other markets. And then you can find information. The thing is that when you use, uh, we don't, when you don't use tools, of course at the bottom you can see that the time to get a result is very long. It will take you hours and hours to get data. And then it will take you even more hours to understand those data. Even let's say you, are, you have 100 prices, but then do you know when the price moves? Is it in February or in June, you know? So there's so much data to crunch, but it's already very good to do it yourself, even if you don't have money for tools. But if you have a little bit of money, and today we have a couple of licenses that we have allocated to our team that can help you to access this particular tool. So today we will use Unicorn Smasher, which is a browser extension that can allow you to find out on Amazon.com and Amazon, so Amazon America and Amazon uh, Italy, France and some other countries to find how your product could compete over there. What are people using as price? How many they sell per day? How many they sell per month? And then those who sell, we need to understand how come they sell more than the others? Because then we can learn and this will give you some valuable data, yeah? So there are other tools uh, that also are called AlgoPix and Juggle Scout, and we kind of classify them, we give you their advantages, their price, and we can share this with you, you can study further. But today, we will use Unicorn Smasher. 
So these are some of the tools. There may be other tools that you can explore, but at least this is the first beginning, yeah? So let's move to the next slide. We want to show you how to use such tool. So at first, uh, I will do a demo uh, live here on one particular product, the, the box that we have over there. So we want, to, uh, we want to do the market analysis and the opportunity research for this particular product from Biosini Bamboo that we also covered last week, yeah? So what is this? This is a, a lamp, a lamp shade with a lamp, yeah? So let's, let's use uh, Unicorn Smasher and we are going to do five, I'm going to show you five things for, for this product. First, we're going to select a marketplace in a specific country and let's look at Amazon in the US. Let's see how, how much they sell these things and how frequently they sell them. And then once we do that, we need to find the right keyword that represents this type of product, yeah? So that's trial and error until we find something that really corresponds to this product. Then, once we have that, the software will pull data for us. It will pull the, the sales per month. As you can see on the right side, that screenshot, it will show us the competitors, how many they sell per day, how many they sell per month, which month they sell. There's so much information to go through. We will just give you like a first introduction. And then, what, what do we do with the data? Uh, so the, the data will help us to identify which price sells the best because sometimes you can put double the price but you only do one sale per month, it's no point. So we have to find what is the price that actually is selling with enough volume for us to build the business case, yeah? That's what we want to do out of this tool and normally in, in our experience, even within half an hour, 45 minutes, you should already know what's going on in the market about this. So it's, let's say in, with one hour of work, you can identify an opportunity, yeah? So we will show you that, and then once we identify that opportunity, we need to spy on the most successful sellers. Like, how come this seller is selling more than the other one? What are they doing different, yeah? It's not only price. Is it the photos, is it the content, you know? Yeah. Is it they're putting some accessories? We need to understand, yeah? So once we have knowledge, we can make like very good decisions, yeah? So let's do that. We're gonna do it for uh, this lamp. We're going to uh, do, actually it's a, uh, it's a case study. Uh, we will do it for Biosini Bamboo. And then after this, we will do an exercise where you guys do it for your own product with the help of our team, yeah? But let's first look at it for this product. Uh, so I'm, I'll go out of the presentation and I'm gonna go to Amazon.com. We said that that's where we want to go and study. Sorry, I'm using the wrong browser. So I'll go to Amazon.com. So this is a, a Chrome extension. So you have to use it in the browser, yeah? And what you have to do is that you have to go on Amazon and already find the keyword that, that represents your product, yeah? So we said that we are going to study this product on Amazon.com. So first I need to find uh, the keyword that relates the best to this. So this is uh, a lampshade, yeah? If you, if you have seen it before. <coughs> so maybe I'm gonna put uh, lampshade. So oh, first it's handmade, yeah? Let's get it out. It's handmade, it's a handmade lampshade, yeah? But also we have uh, the lamp and the bulb, which, which I will explain later. But the first basic of this product is that it's a lampshade, yeah? And it's handmade, so that we don't compete with machine-made. Machine-made, of course, will be cheaper, yeah? So we're competing with handmade. So uh, let's, let's see what I can find. Handmade, lamp, uh, this, you see? Amazon is giving me one result. Handmade, lamp, shades. Yes, let's look at the data here. So now, I need to wait for uh, the page to load with some results. So now it's, it's coming up, okay. So we see that there is a number of products, yeah? Okay, there are different styles, but let's get some data now. We have, uh, we launched Unicorn, Unicorn Smasher Pro. And as you can see now here, I'm gonna move my video to the bottom. You see, it's already starting to pull data, yeah? It's calculating stuff. So imagine how many hours you will need to do if you do it yourself, yeah? It's going through every seller, every page, 
calculating how many units they sell per day, how many per month, how much money, the cost. It's so much data being get, gathered right now in the last two minutes that I was speaking. Yeah? So, and then you can classify the data. You can uh, sort them by category, by discount, by price, by brand. So what, let's look at some uh, important uh, things. Yeah? First, what you want to know is uh, the revenue, the monthly revenue. So this seller is selling for $3,000 per month of lampshades. There is this seller is selling nothing. This one is selling $1,500 per month. This one $3,900. This one $7,000. Oh, that starts to be interesting, yeah? So what I could do is that if I want to have an ID, I'm going to admit some more people. So if, if I want to have a better ID, I can, I can sort by monthly revenue and find the best sellers. Hey, Actually, there's quite some sales eh? for lampshades, yeah? So that's a, good, that's a good sign, and we're talking about handmade lampshade, yeah? And then now, let's look at by price. You see, they're, the best sales, they're, funny enough, they're all selling at $50. That could be a good indicator. That means that people will not pay more than $50 for a handmade lampshade in America. <laughs> yeah? That's what the data is telling us. But, of course, some people may, may try to sell it more expensive. This one is selling at 115 but then no sales. This one is selling at $100, a Japanese lampshade. No sales. What, are, what do we have? Another one is selling at 39 Not much sales. 225 So people are experimenting with different prices, yeah? So we have an indication. It looks like the sweet spot is 50, 50 US dollar. And it looks like these are the daily sales, yeah? So every day, this seller is selling five lamps. You know, if you sell five lamps at $50 a day, it's not bad, yeah? And then if you accumulate all the sellers together, that means that we probably have about 20 to 30 sales of lampshades per day, uh, just for the handmade category. So you see, very quickly, five, 10 minutes, we have some indicators, yeah? So what we, what we can take away for the next exercise is that Lampshades, are the one that sell a lot, are selling at about 50 US dollar. We are selling his, this here at 25 dollar. We're selling it half price in Rwanda. So that means, hey, maybe we can pay for logistics, we can pay for import tax, and we still can make some money because Americans are buying it at 50 dollars. Yeah. yeah? That's what we want to know. Now I know that it can sell, I can do my work, and, find, and go spend time, go spend money on bringing this to American buyers. Yeah. That's exactly what we wanted in, in 10, 15 minutes. So as you could see, uh, within a couple of minutes, we should be able to find some valuable data that will tell you if it's worth it or not to export. So the good thing about these tools is that they have a lot of data for outside of Rwanda. Unfortunately, we don't have much data in Rwanda because it's not yet a very digitized market. But you need to know there is maybe opportunities. The same, the same tools could be available in Kenya, in South Africa. So it's not only America. So we have the same tools for Japan, for the Chinese market. Yeah? So we just want you to know that there is this option. So now let's go back to, uh, to do it as an exercise now, together. We want you to experience it right now, uh, what we have talked about. So we have four people that can help you, at least three. We have Idelfons right here. Yeah, we have Sandra and we have Billy that maybe uh, each one of them can take two or three of you guys and then do this exercise for your product. What is, just choose your best product. Don't do it for 10. What is your best product? And go find, find out if there is an opportunity on Amazon America. If there is not, maybe you can try Amazon Germany. Yeah, because sometimes there's big surprises. The Americans, they don't like it. The Germans, they love it or the Spanish, they like it better, you know? So you have to pick and choose, uh, you have to try all markets until you find out. So I will also be uh, doing, uh, um, I can take also two people here that we can do together a product, but let's take about, let's say, um, let's take 20 minutes, uh, half an hour maximum, and we work in groups, is that okay? Sandra just proposed with Billy a new ID. Uh, you guys can give us example of products, and we do this together, and then we take a second product, yeah? And then we go like that. Yes, we have a question. This? Uh, an example of product. OK, so we will start with you, yeah? And then you, be second. Anyone has a good product they want to try out?
in the market? Okay, three and four. Okay, let's do four. And then what we can do for the others, after we finish this uh, session, we are, we are still here for another half an hour, one hour uh, or one hour. You, can, you will have the opportunity to do it for your product if you didn't have the time right now. So let's try first with, uh, what's your name please? Okay, yes, so Sandra made uh, another good suggestion. Maybe we can show how to install it, uh, this tool. So it's, it's quite simple, you go to, um, it's called Unicorn Smasher Pro.com. I think that's the URL. I will load it right now. And from there, there is a download link on the top here, download. So you just click on download. And then you have two ways of interacting with the software. You can install it on Chrome as an extension, or you can download it on Windows computer and run it as a, as a Windows, yeah? So I will not show you, but this is how you go and get it. But this is the pro version, so it means that you have to pay. Uh, so you could, you could pay, uh, and it's a one-time fee, or you could come back to the e-commerce center, and we have these softwares available. You make an appointment with one of our team, you spend one hour, and after one hour you go back with some very good data, yeah? So it's all open, you do it yourself or you come back here, we will be happy to help you, yeah? So that's how you install it. So we also have a product from, <coughs> from the Zoom chat that we can try. But as we said, let's try with our first guest here. Uh, what is your name, please, in the, in the back? Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Victor. Uh, I represent uh, the company Cashlash Limited. It's a company that manufactures and supplies uh, cleaning products such as uh, toilet cleaners or detergents and laundry products. So um, I think we can start with uh, oxygen bleach. Oxygen bleach. C'est Javel, yeah? Uh, in French, it's Javel. Oxygen bleach, B-L-E-E-C-H. Yeah, it's an old fabric uh, bleach. Ah, so it's a type of fabric? Yes. No, it's a type of uh, detergent. Detergent. Okay, so you guide, guide us. I'm not familiar with the product, but let's do that. So it's called oxygen bleach. Let's see how they name it. Bleach with an A. Bleach with an A here. Yeah. Like this. Uh, cleaner, powder, is it, is it a liquid? It's a liquid. It's a liquid, huh? So this one, oxygen bleach, bleach liquid. Okay, let's look at this. All right, we, uh, it's loading some, some, in, some information, some products. Does this sound like your product? Baby laundry, is it, uh, is this, yeah? Uh, yeah? Yeah. These are the type of products, yeah? Yes. Okay, so we are on the good type of product, so we can compare, yeah? So let's, let's now launch um, our little unicorn here and pull some data over. Okay, data is coming up. Yeah, we start to have some stuff piling up here. Okay, let's give it a couple of seconds. But also, we need to compare the right quantity. So are we talking about five liter, 10 liter, one liter? Let's try one liter. One liter. So in, in that case, let's, let's first identify what sells best. Yeah. Because sometimes you want to sell one liter and actually it's the five liter, you know? We don't know. Yeah. So let's, we let it compile the data. I think it's starting. You see here, there are less sales than the lampshade already. Yeah? It's not, it's less attractive. It doesn't mean that you don't have a business. Yeah? It just, some products have more attraction than others on Amazon America. So let's look by revenue first. Or it could be that our data is not being... Okay, so there is... Is Purex actually a competitor? Right, yeah, it looks like bleach, no? Okay, you have few, few competitors, yeah? So... There is, this one is making a monthly revenue of $1,000, and that's it. There's no, much, there's no much going on, yeah? But still, it doesn't mean that we don't have uh, an opportunity, yeah? Because what happens for this kind of product is that often it's mainly sold B2B, business to business, yeah? And, some, and for your particular case, actually this can be already a good sign because if there are some people that buy a B2B product online, that means that there is a market. And there are resellers that will sell this by cartons, 
by pallets, by thousand liters, yeah? So you have to use multiple uh, data sets and sometimes look for yourself. Because sometimes also the tools, they can't access all the data. So what you can do is just go back <clears throat> on Amazon and actually also I'll admit this person and you can just look at who is doing sales because B2B sales, they don't appear on the front end. But Amazon B2B is actually a huge market. People, they use Amazon to buy big quantities. So it would be interesting for your case uh, to look at it more in depth, yeah? But for the sake of time, let's take a second example. But before that, you see this one here? It has 1,900 reviews. So by experience, if you have 2,000 reviews, that means that you have sold at least 10,000 units because only 10% of the people leave reviews. That means actually there's a lot of sales. It just somehow is not recorded, yeah? This one has 2,000 reviews, so it's, it's also... What we don't know here, and that's where we need... Uh, uh, tools is that we don't know how long it took them to sell all this. Some are, some are there for 10 years, some are there for five years, yeah? So you have to make that data, but there is, there are sales, yeah? Would that be enough for, for your example? Maybe we can try something else? I think we can try something else. But can we try from someone else? <laughs> and then we do it for you after the, the training, yeah? I think you were number one, you were number two. Hello everyone, I'm Abi Avrahed from Tigran Mushroom, I'm the founder and uh, managing director of Tigran Mushroom. We basically focus on farming and supplying the product directly from the farm to end users, either businesses or households. So we're currently dealing with oyster mushroom, so we can search as fresh oyster mushroom. Very good. So what we can compare here, I think, is packed mushroom, maybe dried mushroom or something. <laughs> So f we don't have much fresh data here. Uh -huh. So we can search either for dry or for the powder. Dry. Dry or? Powder. Powder. Let's look at powder. Perfect. Because I think it uh, takes less space. Yes. So less logistics, yeah? Okay, good. So which type of mushroom? For oy oyster mushroom. Oyster mushroom, powder. Oyster mushroom, powder. Pow powder, yeah? Let's, let's try it out. So uh, let's see my spelling. Oyster, is it this way? Oyster. Mushroom powder. Powder. Yeah? Organic. Is it organic? Yes, organic. Uh, that, will, that probably will change the price data, yeah? <laughs> okay, let's look at what pulls off and let's first have a look at just humanly. Uh, so look, 2,600 reviews. This, this sells a lot. Uh, I, th I think from the first look, you can see that they're all selling quite big quantities here. Um, and there is not only five or ten sellers, there's quite a number. Oh, this one has sold, has 50,000 reviews. But it's, it's also prote with protein, so it's a mix, yeah? Uh, so I think this, if you spend one hour going through, you will, you will also get some ideas how they sell it, you see? Maybe you want to sell it as a um, uh, supp uh, food supplement. Yes. Because it looks like people want this box of food supplements with the gelule, I don't know how to say in English. The gelule, you know, that small uh, pill, Cups. like small pill. Cups, yeah? So that, that's already can tell you, even your packaging, what could be the, a better packaging to sell this product mm -hmm. instead of just, pro, uh, just dry powder. But you can see here, they're selling it also as a powder, but they, they, they're using a dry photo. This one, they're selling the dry mushroom as well, yeah? So I think for your case, we need to also specify it if it's dry. We already did powder, yeah? Yes. So you see, the, it's seldom comes as a powder. It comes more often as, uh, as this uh, supplement, huh? mm -hmm. which is interesting. This one is a powder. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Let's look at what the unicorn can give us as a data. Hopefully it can pull some... some. Look at the number here. Yeah, so it looks like this is uh, creating some interesting revenue. Oh, there's someone doing a hundred thousand dollar a month of sales. And mute, admit. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost a hundred thousand dollars. So almost a million. Almost a million dollars. Ooh, I'm gonna change my business. <laughs> ah, this, this is very good. Yeah. So, of course, uh, this could be a big brand and also it's the, the gel, yeah? Uh, you see? That gives you a big indication. But let's find a powder. This is a powder, yeah? Okay. So this powder, they're, they're making $100,000 a month. 
Yeah, it's a sweet business, yeah? Uh, let's look at another powder. This is powder as well, yeah? With protein. Ah, so maybe you, you see, maybe you need to mix a little bit with other products, yeah? This is mushroom turkey tail. Okay? So, first glance, big business. Big consumer business, sorry. Yes. Yeah, these are consumer sales, yeah? Big consumer business, small product, good. Because for shipping, I can stock a lot in one pallet, yeah? So this is an interesting opportunity, yeah? Uh, powder, but I would say even better than powder, uh, supplement uh, pills in a nice bottle, you spend on the design, and then let's look at the average price, price yeah? So they're selling this, this which is uh, probably like 50, um, 50 units at $40. Yes. And this one, they're selling it at 17. So you see between, let's say, between 15, 15, one five and $50, it looks like it's a range of price that makes sales. Yes, they actually put the average price up there? Yes, so the average price, where is it? Yeah. Oh, 23. Exactly, so it's good. So average price is $23. That's a good indication. Uh, sometimes they don't get this data right because average monthly sales is much more than this. Just by looking at the data, yeah? yeah? So you have to take this table and then browse Amazon, go deeper and then compare, but it's very obvious that there is a business here, yeah? So I think you can invest on this, yeah? Le we can also do a bit more later, but let's, let's try another product, please. Thank you. My name is Vanessa Owase. I'm from Ichirezi Natural Products. We do essential oils and some cosmetics that are from our essential oils. And uh, we have a variety of them, but I'm much interested in Tajetes essential oil. How do you spell that? T-A-G-I-T-I-S. Okay, so it's Vanessa from Ichirezi Essential Oils here in Kigali, yeah? And, and you're interested in, um, in one specific essential oil, yeah? Yes. Which, please help me to spell it again. T-A. T-A. G. G. E-T-E. E-T-E. S. S. Yes, essential oil. Tagetes essential oil. Oh, it's here. Tagetes essential oil, yes. Let's look at this. So usually essential oils, they sell a lot on Amazon. Uh, this one in particular, I don't know, but we're going to discover very quickly. So we have a couple of products here. You can see that only three review, only two reviews. Okay, let's scroll. <coughs> we have, we don't have that many big number of reviews. This one has 15 reviews. Okay, so it looks like this particular, oh, we have something here, <coughs> 17,000. Reviews? Oh, that's lavender. It's lavender. Yeah, I know. Indication for you. Yeah. I know that one. Sometimes we want to sell A and people want to buy B. Actually, it's kind of new. On the market. Ah, so that explains it. Now just interested so in exporting. If it's new, you may be the only seller, which means that it's a small market, but not much competition, which is a good for, also good for business. Sometimes it's, there is a lot of demand, but a lot of competition, and then it's like a blood battle. <laughs> yeah. So you're in Blue Ocean. And before that, the mushrooms, I think that was Red Ocean. I think that one has a lot of competition. But maybe there is some, uh, some meat or some mushrooms to, to eat. <laughs> okay, let's look a bit deeper now with the, um, with the unicorn overall data for this particular Tajetes. How do you pronounce it? Tajetes. Tajetes. Tajetes essential oil. Okay, it's pulling some data. Okay, there is definitely less, but uh, let's classify them by revenue. Uh, something is selling, this one is doing $75,000 per month of revenue, and that's lavender. So again, this confirms what people want, yeah? The next one that is doing the largest number is actually a collection of, of cents, which also can be good. Like your five, six, seven cents in one corporate package or one gift package. That could be a good thing. This one was e more. I'm not sure. We will have to look deeper, yeah? So, pure, this is Tajetes. This is the first product that is exactly yours, yeah? yeah? So this one is making $140 sales per month. So either it's too early for this product, or you want to be there and put your flag first. 
and the sales will pick up in one year, six months, we don't know. Yeah? So that's a good indication. But if you want to fight right now, it's lavender. Yeah. Yes, okay. thank you. Thank you. So this is a first good indication. Let's do another two products, one from the room here and one from online. And then we need, I think, this is very attractive as you can see. <laughs> so we will be available even after the training. You can come back to the center or those who are online, you can make an appointment or request another session, yeah? We are here, remember we are here to serve you, to help you with this knowledge and we have the software and we have the people who know how to use the software, yeah? So let's do another two examples. I think after Vanessa, there was a fourth person. Yes, thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Kajiwami Christian. Uh, I'm, I'm from Rugari Coffee, Easyway. My company is it's called Easyway Limited. We are in coffee sector. Yeah. So just I want to know about the uh, coffee in Amazon. Thank you. So Christian, Christian from the brand Rugali Coffee. Yeah. Uh, we know you, we like you. <laughs> yes, you're already on Rwanda Mart, so yes. So I think coffee is going to explode the charts. But let's look at it if I'm wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so what we need to know, I think, for you in your particular uh, sector, I think we will need to dive more precisely. Is it medium roast? Is it in capsule? Is it ground? You know? But let's look at first the figures, just to give you an idea on what kind of business is happening. So. Yours is, uh, and it's Arabica coffee? Yes, it's Arabica. So it's Arabica ground coffee? Ground and beans also. Uh, let's look at ground for now. Let, let's do Arabica ground coffee, okay? And then we will look, uh, we will dive into, but let's see. So, up front, so many brands with thousands of reviews, which means hundreds of thousands of sales. Yeah. Of course, these, these are here for decades, yeah? Because coffee is very known. But already when you browse through but manually, you can see that, wow, 20,000, 17,000 reviews. So all these numbers, when they have these reviews, we can multiply by 10. This is definitely selling and people are buying and buying again. And actually sometimes what you can notice is that people are buying this product as a subscription, yeah. which is another way of selling. Very powerful and coffee and tea and spices on Amazon are selling as subscription. So you may want to dive and compete at the subscription level. Like every month you get a fresh Rugali 500 gram coffee uh, to your door. Every month, every week, every day even. Yeah. yeah. That could be where you can compete, yeah? Let's see what we get as a compiled data. You see, it's still loading. Uh, we haven't finished loading the page. So much offers there are there. So again, this is Red Ocean, a lot of sharks. There is some brand from our country. Uh, yeah, there are some. I saw last time uh, Gorilla Coffee is there, uh, Kivu Noir, I think, is there. So we could, we could put actually Rwanda. Let's put Rwanda Arabica ground coffee. So people are... Ah, one very good information. When Amazon does that product, that means that there is a huge demand. <laughs> because these this malicious guys, they have the data. So they know that Rwandan coffee is wanted. So you look, Amazon Fresh, they came out with their own brand. That's it. Uh, for me, I don't even search further. <laughs> yeah? If they want to copy us, that means they saw that there is business. But let's look at the data, yeah? Okay. So sometimes there, in, for certain products, the software doesn't catch everything, but it should give us some... So it's, you see, it's compiling. We can give it a couple of minutes. So the longer you give to the software, the more time it has to go and dig the data. But of course today we are a bit in a rush, yeah? So I may cut it off at one point, but uh, let's give it another few seconds. No, 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 they are here. So there, this one, this is Amazon. Yeah, you see, this is not possible because they're selling like hell. Maybe they're blocking it, they don't want you to know. <laughs> yeah. But let's do by monthly revenue if we have enough data right now. So you see it's comparable to what was the mushroom oyster, yeah? It's getting in the million dollar month for a single seller. We're already like in Formula One <coughs> products, yeah, basically. So there is a lot and, and we dived into Rwanda coffee. This is not even coffee. Yeah. It's like Rwanda, Arabica, coffee and there is already so much sales. That means that you, can, you will also be able to compete in other categories like just 
classic coffee or just Arabica coffee. So this is a huge market, huge, huge market. What you need to do, Christian, is that you need to dive in and maybe uh, find the niche where there is still some sales at a good price and less sellers. Because this tool can tell you how many sellers there is for every product. So if you see there is 300 sellers, uh, it's already a bit hard. But if you see there's only five sellers, uh, you, may, you may catch some market shares, yeah? So this is a little bit, this, this is really like an introduction tool, yeah? And then you have to dive in, either you come back with us or you dive in by yourself. But definitely, uh, I'm a fan of coffee and we, we've sold coffee on Amazon and eBay and I can tell you we've sold a lot. Uh, yeah. Rwandan coffee, by the way. Good. Let's now do a product from our uh, people on, on the chat. So I think there was uh, <coughs> uh, beetroot uh, powder, I think, from from Anne, is it Anne? Uh, so we, Annette. Annette, from Annette, beetroot powder. Okay, let's look at that. So we already saw the powder of the mushroom. Yeah, let's now see for a vegetable. <coughs> beetroot powder, probably organic. It is organic, yeah? Okay, let's pull the data here. So maybe Annette, if you have like further question, you can unmute yourself and ask us as, as you go. Or you can drop messages on the chat and, and Sandra will help to, to sort it out. Okay, so Annette is from Veget Solutions. I think they're also with us on Rwanda Mart, yeah? yeah? So let's give it a couple of seconds for this to, to uh, appear. But as you can see here, there is an indication as to the packaging again. So maybe we are making powder packaging like this. But also people are selling it in this kind of, uh, how you call this? It's not a bottle. How would you call this? Like a, a small container, yeah? That looks again a little bit like a nutrient, like a supplement, food supplement. And remember, this is America, yeah? These are American buyers. American buyers, they don't buy like us in Africa. Like, like when we buy here in Morocco or Senegal or in Rwanda, you may actually buy some very good product in a lousy bag, yeah? But sometimes other countries, they will buy a beautiful packaging with a lousy product inside. Yeah. And it works, unfortunately. Because they are so far, it's dry, it stays stocked for two years in a warehouse, but the packaging is beautiful. <laughs> and this is what appears here. You see, this is beautiful. This is very nice packaging. Now, the power for Rwandan entrepreneurs is that you, have, you can have both. You can have a beautiful packaging and the beautiful product inside. And once you hit the market, people will stay with you. Yeah. That's our power, is that if we can reach this level, we're very good. But uh, <coughs> let's look at the, at the comments, uh, the reviews. So this is not bad, 4,000 reviews. That means that they sold probably 40,000, 50,000 units of this. Then you have in the hundreds, in the dozens. This one's also, also in the hundreds, 2,000. It's not bad. And also if you look at it, so it's organic bits and they're selling. So what's the size? It looks like it's... The, the most selling one is 100 gram or something like that. So you need to, sh to look at how heavy. Are we talking about one kilo or are we talking about 250 grams, yeah? So you will need to do, uh, sorry, she's online. So, Jeanette, yeah? She, no, Annette. Annette. So Annette, you will have to do some more diving uh, as to what's the best quantity that is the best sold, yeah? But let's look at the global numbers and roughly the size of this market. Okay, it's starting to come up. Maybe I can do by revenue. Okay, hey, it's not bad. Huh? This seller in particular is doing 300, $375,000 of sales per month. And they are on Amazon since 2018. That means they're, they've been on Amazon for four years. That's very good. They've been there for four years? Sorry? They're millionaires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Million you're right. <laughs> they're millionaires with beetroot, uh, beetroot powder. So that's a good indication, yeah? There's others that are doing much less. So you can see that there is a big gap between the number one seller and the next one. That's where you need to find out why. Why is there such a big gap? Can I be as good as the best seller? And what do I, what, what do I need to do? Change my packaging? Maybe they're mixing it with something. You need to dig out, yeah? So Annette, I think you have a good candidate. There is only one player that, that is making like 80% of the sales in this first page which means you have one, one seller to compete with that could be worth uh, investigating further, yeah? 
So as you can see, uh, there is a lot of work to do, but I think it's an exciting one, yeah? Because once you realize how your product or your competi competitor are doing in a certain market, we've just done the US, sometimes you have surprises, Japan is 10 times bigger market. So don't close into one market, yeah? Go and explore the others, yeah? Sometimes Germany is number one for a given product. If you're selling tea, you want to look at the UK, yeah? yeah. They drink a lot of tea. You want to look at India, they drink a lot of, lot of tea. So this is well, just the beginning, yeah? With this tool work in the different markets? So you see, um, that's what I put in this slide. Uh, let's go back to this slide here. Certain tools have more markets. The one that has the most markets is Jungle Scout. Jungle Scout, they, serve, they have data in 17 countries, 1-7. So maybe they cover India, maybe they cover Japan. I think they do cover uh, some Asian countries, yeah? And then some other tools, they, they do less. Like Unicorn, at the moment, is covering these seven countries. But that's already not bad, yeah? And then there is you. There is you, Christian. There is you, Vanessa. You can do any country, any marketplace. Yeah. yeah. So you can go and, and browse and take time where you don't have a software or put the money in the software to save your time. Either or, you are able to find the data, yeah? So I think we can close this uh, little chapter. And let's now look at, we have the opportunity. Let's now reverse work out our costs. Because sometimes you think it's an opportunity and then the costs are higher than the opportunity, yeah? That's the idea. A couple of questions that you need to ask yourself. Like, you need to think out of the box always if you want to compete in any market, yeah? So we have a couple of questions to guide you is, first, whatever you sell, is there a color or a flavor or a scent that work better than other? And we have seen it. Lavender instead of Targetist, yeah? Ah, that's a flavor. Coffee, is it, is it fruity that sells? Is it the acidic? Is it the, you know? Aroma. Which aroma is selling better? Which roast is selling better? Dark roast, medium roast? or espresso, you know? So you have to ask yourself in your own product, what is that specific variation of that product that is actually more demanded by the Americans? And then in the UK, it may be completely different. They would prefer more acidic. And then if you sell coffee to Italy, it's gonna be a complete different buyer profile than, than Americans drinking coffee, yeah? yeah? So those are the question. Which flavor, which version, which scent, which sweetness, you know? that people like. And then a second question is that, is there a seasons to the sales? Do Americans buy coffee in December? Or do they buy it in summer? Yeah? Do they buy mushrooms in April? Or do they buy them in September? Yeah? Likewise for essential oils, maybe they buy them in November because maybe there are some properties with the flu, you know, you, know, you don't know. So that's the question, what is the season? Because if I may do so much effort and I send my product and it's the wrong season, it's all loss, yeah? Or you have to pay storage and your product is losing value until that season catch up, yeah? So timing is very important. A third question that you need to ask yourself is which country? And sometimes even which region in that country, yeah? Some, so if you have the wrong season, let's say your product is bought in winter, and right now you have stock, but it's winter in America. But guess what? It's summer in Brazil. Yeah? So you, then, you, then you look at Amazon Brazil. Yeah? Or it's Australia. Australia, they will have the reverse, yeah? Compared to the, to the north. So that's how you can find your, your best market and the best timing. And then <clears throat> it's very important that you look at the reviews. Sorry? Admit, yeah? So the reviews, what are people thinking? What are people saying? And in the reviews, you're gonna find out that people are saying, hey, can you do a red color? We like red in China. Nobody is doing red packages, yeah? And then you're gonna find out Moroccan buyers saying, we love sweet. It's not sweet enough, whatever you're selling, yeah? So you look at these reviews, people are either criticizing or giving good uh, elements. And then you know which elements can kill you and which elements can give you positive feedbacks in that market, very important. Unfortunately, there is not yet tools that can do that semantic analysis, so it has, it has to be a human doing it. And then, once you do the reviews, then you focus on the best sellers. Why are they the best seller? How come they sell more than others, yeah? So I think we were looking at the beetroot example. How come that beetroot seller is selling 10 times more than the second in position? They must have something that we need to understand. Is it their photos? Is it they put a video? 
Is it their price? Is it their packaging? Is it their customer support? Yeah, they answer fast. Is it that they offer enough choice? Yeah, you need to go dig and find out. The more data you can uh, digest, the more understanding you will have of the market. Yeah, and this is really what we want you to, uh, you know, think of. Is like before doing any sales or before doing any expenses on export, find out the data. Yeah, I think it's clear between us. You can see that there is a lot of opportunity. Let's move to the cost of marketing. Yeah, there are different costs. Uh, mainly two costs that we will review today. The cost of marketing and then the cost of logistics. So for the sake of time, because we've spent a lot, a, lot, a lot more time on opportunity and it's on purpose, because we want you to think opportunity. If you don't have an opportunity, there is no point in checking the price of anything because anything will look expensive. But once you know that there is an opportunity, that will gauge your costs. It will give them a meaning. Because you can say, yeah, it cost me $20 of shipping, but I can sell it at 70. That's not a problem. Yeah? So let's move now. The cost of marketing is basically the cost for you, the e-commerce cost. When you will sell on Amazon, on eBay or Etsy, you need to find out because they take a commission. Yeah? Amazon takes a commission between something like between 10 and up to 25%. 17%, 15% in average. So that will get out of your, of your sale, yeah? And then you have transaction fees sometimes if you sell somewhere else. MasterCard, Visa card, uh, sometimes it costs between three and six percent. And then for you here in Rwanda, you can't use US dollars. You're gonna have to bring them back to Rwanda and transform them into Rwandan franc. Then there is currency exchange costs, yeah? So that's why it's important that once you have the opportunity, you, wo you walk back, or how, how you call it, you reverse engineer, the needed cost that will allow you to reach that opportunity. And then you find out, after all these costs, am I making better money than selling here in Kigali? Because if it's too much cost to go to the US, maybe I want to sell in Uganda. Maybe I want to sell in Kenya, yeah? Maybe I don't need to go that far. And that's, that's what we can do with data before you hurt yourself trying to access the market. So there is a very good tool that uh, my former team uh, mate has developed at the International Trade Center, a UN organization, that I invite you to use. So that's the URL. Uh, it's tools.ecomconnect.org slash calculator. This is a calculator that will take your category of product, your selling price, which, which marketplace you want to sell in, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, and then it will calculate for you uh, the cost, your, your marketing and your sales costs. So for example, I can do just one example very quickly, but I put for you here the 10, the 10 or 11 data points that you need to feed into that system, yeah? So if I, if I may, I will just load the page very quickly. <coughs> okay, so it's loading the, cal the calculator. <coughs> Okay, so you see it's, it will guide you. What are you selling? So maybe we can use uh, Veget Solution. Is it your company is Veget Solutions? Tigrua. Tigrua. That sounds Tigray. That is Tigray in Rwanda. Welcome. Thank are you Eritrean? I'm Tigrayan. You're Tigrayan. 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 Very good. Very good. So it, what, what your product was uh, oyster powder. So it's food, yes. food or groceries, I think. Let's, uh, food and beverages. That's the category. Yeah, they don't have here. Okay. They, they, they did like, like major categories. Okay. So let, then you have to um, inform the number of products, yeah? You can select one. For the yeah, we go with one. That's the easiest. And then what's the average price that we saw? It was $50, was it? No, it was 20 no, We don't have good market for order here in Rwanda. But in, Amer in Amazon, what did we see? 45 maximum. 45 maximum. So average was 22. Okay, so let's say 24 is the average, yeah? 24 was the average sale, and then there were a lot of monthly sales. Yes. So maybe let's say this is your, your expected sales. Let's say you sell 100 per month, just to know, yeah? Let's see what, what kind of cost you're going to get. And then you're selling on, yeah, calculate and then we choose. Okay, so you see selling on Amazon, you will have a margin of 20%. If you sell on eBay, you have a, big, uh, a lower margin. So, no, sorry, this is, these are the platform seller fees. 
So Amazon takes almost 20% commission. Uh, eBay takes 13, 14%. Uh, hey, Etsy only takes 6%. And this is what? Shopify, it will cost you 33%. Yeah? So if you want to go and get more details, because also Amazon has maybe more fees, but much more volume. Yes. Yeah? But then if you're short on margins, maybe you can't compete on Amazon, then you go on Etsy. 10% on, uh, less fees, maybe that 10% is gonna help me be a bit more efficient, yeah? So that's what this calculator can give you roughly, yeah? But you can see here that I can come and, and do a more detailed analytics, yeah? You can put also your, your production costs. Let's say, how much does it cost you to produce? Uh, less than 1,000, 1,000 is okay. 1,000 what? No, we are in Frank. <laughs> no problem. So is it $1? No, 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 that is for the fresh one. So ah, the powder. around 10 kilo of fresh for 1 kilo of powder. Yeah, but that was, one, that was not one kilo. They were selling in gels, uh, cellul. It was like 100 gram, 200 gram. Let's just give a, a rough number. Four or five. Four or five? Let's take, let's take $5 production costs. Yeah? And then shipping costs, from my experience, from Kigali to, let's say, New York by air, because unfortunately by boat it will be too slow, yeah? You have to count about 6 to $7 per kilo. Let's put seven. Yeah? Now this will be in America. The product is in America, yeah? And then the product price that we are selling and shipping fee, Amazon gives free shipping for uh, Amazon FBA, yeah? So let's not put any shipping fees. You're selling 100 units per month uh, and then you have the details here, yeah? So you can sell as individual plan, shipping costs, so I, uh, where is it? Fixed final value fees, uh, the final, fixed final value fees, yeah, so you have a value fee per sale of fifteen dollar one five. So if you sell at twenty five, let's say you sell at twenty five, fifteen are gone, but you're left with ten dollar. Hey, that's not too bad, yeah, because this is gross gross profit, yeah. yeah. So ten dollar per uh, per sale, that's okay, yeah. So it could be workable. So that's the, what this tool will allow you to to know is how much it will cost you to reach the consumer and pay for all these fees. This includes payment fees because Amazon and the others, they charge transaction fees, so it includes the payment fees, but not the currency exchange, yeah? So this is very fast what we wanted to show. You can please do it, just click on the link, do it for your own product, sort out how much the e-commerce sales channel is gonna cost you, because then we can focus on the marketing. We still have to, uh, on the logistics. We still have to figure out the cost of logistics, yeah? So here we just guessed, we put six, seven dollar, but it could be more, it could be less as shipping costs, yeah? So this is a quick look, and then you also, again, have to dive into the fees. Because, because we have such a small volume now, so if we have a subscription fee to pay to Amazon or Shopify, it looks big. But if, you, if we were dealing with one ton of products, the subscription fee will have a lower impact, and therefore actually you, you actually have more margins. So that's why you have to do it with the right quantity, yeah? So I think you got the advantage of these tools. So every marketplace usually have a, a fee calculator or they give you an Excel file. So even if you don't use this software, you can find a calculator or you can go into the price page and figure out all the fees and do your little Excel file. And then now you know how much it costs, yeah? So let's move into now uh, logistics because logistics is a maker or a killer especially for, for international and export, yeah? And you have to really understand how you get logistics right, especially just getting your product out of the country and, le and getting it to land in America or Japan. So this is not to scare you. It's just to tell you that be careful. You may want to include some costs that, you, that we always easily forget. Uh, so the first one that we easily forget is the taxes. Yeah. But they are there, <laughs> yeah? Somehow unavoidable. Sometimes, uh, sometimes legally uh, reduced for certain products, you don't have VAT, yeah? yeah? But you need to know, is there VAT in America for this product? Is there VAT for this product in Rwanda? Is there VAT in Kenya? Is there import duties? So if you sell tea to India, you may encounter 100% or 80% import duties because they have so much tea and they, they're protecting the market. So look at the taxes, all types of taxes. What are they, how much? Uh, have I included them in my costing, yeah? The second thing that you need to always, and I notice, especially in our countries, that we don't calculate properly, 
is how much time we spend as humans and our people. We don't give it a price, we don't give it a value, and we don't calculate it, and the day that you scale, suddenly you have a human resources cost that you didn't calculate at the beginning. So count every hour that you spend in preparing this should be costed in your cost. Is it two hours of human work? Is it three, five, ten, one month of salary? You know, factor it in. The third one is the transaction costs. I have to pay an accountant, yeah? I have to declare VAT. I have to pay the bank fees. Uh, a wire transfer from America to here, a swift wire transfer costs between $35 and $75. I need to ac account for that, yeah? When I take a payment by credit card, there is three to five percent. All these little fees, you need to be aware of them and put them somewhere, compute them. And finally, what we don't do, and, and, and for me is often a killer for, for beginners doing e-commerce, is that we do not even consider that people will, return, will want to return the products. And product returns is extremely expensive. For example, if you sell uh, 10 boxes of mushroom at $25, we, we, you have about $10 of gross margin, yeah? That means if you sell 10, normally you make $100 gross margin, yeah? If you have two returns, they kill that margin. That's how it is with returns. So, so what it means is that you need to find out how can I reduce my returns? Maybe it's the packaging. Maybe I didn't put in my description, if you open it, we can't accept returns. So description of products, the rules, the term, you know, shipping, shipping conditions, written conditions, payment and refund conditions, all is information. If you give the right information, if you get the right information, and if you give the right information, <coughs> forgive me, <coughs> you can reduce a lot of uh, returns. But also, you can ask them to return not to Rwanda. You can tell them, okay, you return, but return it to, to uh, an address in America. If you have clients in Germany, don't let them return to Rwanda. Say, so I have an address in Germany, and then you collect all the returns in one go. You can re-offer them as gift, or or like bulk them and, and ship them in one go, yeah? We did this in the former training, okay? So, you but you have to put, so my, my approach to it, when I do a business, I look at what kind of product it is, and then there are statistics on how, m how many percentage of return you have. For example, if I sell clothes for women, the average return is 60%. That means every 10 sales I make of a dress, six will come back. <gasps> I can't sell at the same price, right? <laughs> then I'm gonna double my price. Because that could, that could kill me, yeah? If I sell spices, people seldom return you spices, yeah? Unless it's really rotten, yeah? So you, depending on what you sell, you account for 10%, 20%, 50% uh, of return so that at least you don't kill your business in the process. And the final one, uh, all this should result that for one single product, you need to have black belt karate in costing. Yeah? I have to know exactly all the costs I'm going to incur from manufacturing to logistics and then sales and returns. Yeah? That's what you need to come up uh, with, is that you master for every single SKU. So let's continue. Finally, we're going to reach now the cost of logistics, local and export. Again, we're just putting you on the, on the track and then you have to dig. Yeah? So the first thing you have to understand in log before starting logistics is what we call volumetric weight or actual weight. What does that mean? Because that will change a lot your misunderstanding of, of logistic prices. Let's start, with the, let's start with the teddy bear that you see on the screen, yeah? So this teddy bear, the real weight is half kilo, 500 gram, yeah? But when you're gonna package it into a box, it's gonna take three liters or three decimeters of volume, which means the airline or DHL will charge you for three kilo. So <clears throat> what happens is that there is a big misunderstanding that you have a client in America, you say, hey, cool, my thing is only 500 gram, 500 gram is only $20 shipping, you bring it to the carrier, they tell you, no, 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 it's not $10, it's $50, why? And then they tell you volumetric weight, yeah? And we don't get it, because that's how they calculate. They don't calculate the real weight of the product, this is, this is 200 gram. So I think I, I will ship the price of 200 gram. I bring it to DHL, it's gonna be the price of five kilo. Why, because can you, can you pass me that box, please? 
<coughs> because when you put it in this box, then you measure this, and then you get the volumetric weight, and the volumetric weight is surprisingly much higher. Yeah? yeah? So you need to understand that there is a for mathematic formula. We don't want you to get your head broken <laughs> with the mathematic formula. <laughs> But there is a link we will share with you where you can go and enter. That's why we have the ruler here today, yeah? Where you measure your box, okay? I have 35 by 25 by whatever. And then it will give you the volumetric weight. So don't go and, and think this is only 250 gram. Measure the final package, yeah? So that's volumetric weight. Very dangerous for SMEs. It, it's, it's like a big problem and very hard to explain. That's why we tried to explain it with a physical example and this nounours, this uh, teddy bear, yeah? To make it look a bit cuter. But it's really uh, a bad surprise. So how do you go about it? You measure, yeah? And we can do it for this box. So dep it depends on the product. But usually uh, home decoration takes a lot of volume and it's very light. And that's why our artisans, they never understand the shipping costs. Because, because for them it's like, wow, it's 100 grams, yeah? It always looks super expensive because of misunderstanding. So let's do this example first because the only reverse example is if you ship gold. <laughs> gold will be heavier than the volume, yeah? But then guess what? They will charge, they will charge you the actual weight because that's what was written in the, in the slide is that the courier, they charge which one is the most expensive. Either the actual weight or the volume weight, you always lose. <laughs> yeah? So you better know. Okay? Now let's do it for this one, yeah? We know that this will go in the box and now we're going to ship this volume. We're not shipping weight, we're shipping volume. Even if actually, if I ship this to the US empty, it will cost the same. That's why you have to understand it. So let's look at this. Can you measure it please? Uh, and help me measure it and we're going to go into this URL. So we're using the official calculator from DHL, you know? They all have their own calculators depending on the logistic provider you, uh, you take, yeah? So it's better to use the calculator of, of that particular logistic provider. So how much, so we are in centimeters. What's the length, please? The length, uh, standing weight. Yes, yeah? Standing. Uh, standing is height. How much? Yes. 30, 30, 30, okay, and then we can mix them up, no problem. The width or whatever, 23 for the width and then the length, it's a square so it should be the same, no? Okay, so that's our box, yeah? Let's look how much volumetric weight this is. So I hope there is no internet problem. You see, you're going to be charged for 3 kilo. That's a big difference. I thought it was 300 gram. End up it's 10 times heavier, according to the logistic provider. So you imagine, I saw, I saw our people uh, fighting with the, uh, with the logistic provider. Are you crazy? You're cheating me. This cannot be three kilo. <laughs> yeah? So this is how it works, guys, yeah? Volume. So I think you got the point about um, volumetric weight, yeah? So it looks tricky, but it's not really tricky once you know that what they're talking about. So we, we find it, yeah? So normally once you find your volumetric weight, now you can go and you can understand the price. So normally uh, logistic providers, they will give you a table, a grid by, by uh, volumetric weight and zone, country zone or region zones. Now you will go and fetch the right price and you don't do the mistake. And now you know if your price online can actually accommodate for volumetric weight shipping or not. So that was the, uh, the idea of this uh, slide, yeah? And then you have to choose the right provider, yeah? So depending on how much you ship as volume or weight, different providers dif use different uh, rates and different ways of calculation. For example, DHL uses the volume, the, the volumetric weight, but Iposita, if I'm not correct, uh, if, if you don't use the volume, you use the actual weight. Yes. So that means that maybe Iposita at first looks expensive, but, but they are doing with actual weight, not the, not the volumetric weight. So actually, if you compare them truly, by understanding if it's actual weight or volume weight, you will really make a better choice. Sometimes we kick out a player 
because we didn't know that actually they were using actual weight. Yeah? So don't do that mistake. Always compare apples with apples, basically. That's what we say, yeah? If it's volumetric weight, I, comp I compare it. So that's the ID. And then you have different options that have different speed and different costs. So if I want to ship fast to America, maybe I use DHL, FedEx, you know? Or maybe I send a pallet in advance and I put it with Amazon FBA. So this, we did it last week. We can expand on it. But I think for today, uh, it's enough, just as a recall. The next slide, Idelfonce, is, is, uh, is for you. <laughs> yes? So maybe before we give the, uh, the floor to Idelfonce, Idelfonce is from Iposita. I think you're in charge of e-commerce, is that correct? My name is Prince Idelfonce, and uh, I'm director of commercial unit and e-commerce project coordinator in the post office. So, uh, so in terms of logistics, especially for e-commerce, this topic is very, very wide. You cannot uh, uh, get uh, more understanding in sh this short time. But uh, clearly, for what we offer for SMEs and the, those who are in e-commerce, for especially for post office, we have more than uh, two ways of shipping to make sure our customer get the access of logistic cost. Uh, especially we have uh, EMS, Express Mail Service, which will take a uh, few days of delivery. The second one is the postal parcel delivery. That will take like uh, seven to 14 days. Uh, the third one is a small package delivery that uh, can, uh, I can uh, interest for SMEs, which will take like uh, 14 days. And also it is very cheap compared to those two uh, uh, two ways of shipping. Uh, the, second, uh, the second one, once we provide, I mean, if you have uh, the product for e-commerce service center, we provide up to 20% discount to make sure your product uh, get access on the global market, to make sure uh, your product uh, should be delivered anywhere around the world. Not only that, but also uh, we, we give the different ways of payment. Sometimes uh, you guys as e-commerce operators or SMEs, you have different customers around the world, and also you have different ways of uh, doing business with them. So we, uh, once we partner with you, we give uh, the service and you pay at the end of the month, which is a very... Uh, yes, 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 uh, yes, please. And also it motivates you to make business because if you get a customer from the US, from, uh, from Europe, you can come to our site and also we ship your product at the destination. And also we provide you for API integration to make sure your customer will get the access information for your cost of logistic. So not only that, but also we provide local transport, especially for goods and cargoes. If you have like a, a raw material in the South province, you can pick and deliver to your uh, warehouse without uh, any problem or no, no, no to charge. <laughs> yeah. So what we do, uh, if you have like a, a shipment that should come from your, I mean from Huye district to Chigari, we combine those shipments with different people, then we charge you uh, a flexible amount that could do, help you to do business. Uh, in a few words, the, uh, that are what we provide for you. Not only that, but also our prices uh, in zoning. It means you have zone A, zone B, zone C, with uh, category of countries. So I will provide my email and the contact so that if, in case you want to ship the package, you can contact us to help you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, Idelfonce, Prince, thank you very much. I think you will share your contacts. Yes? Maybe, uh, Sandra, you can uh, pass it to the group on WhatsApp. So there are two things that we want you to remember uh, about what we've just, what, uh, what uh, Idelfonce just presented, yeah? And this is also your homework. So we, we are going to do a second session, just like Idelfonce said, this is not enough to cover everything. This is just to open your, your mind that this is the work that you need to do if you want to make money, or at least avoid losing money. 
So two important things before we give you the homework is that you need to understand that Iposita is not using volumetric weight, it's using actual weight. So when, when you will get the pricing from, from Edelfons, you will actually put or look for 300 gram, not three kilo. That's 10 times difference, yeah? That's number one thing that you have to remember. Number two, and I think you should, it's recorded, he just gave you 20% discount. <laughs> yeah. So it's recorded, it's here. <laughs> and there is 20% uh, discount, yeah? So these two should give you enough advantage to compare it with other logistic providers. Now what you need to do and understand is like he said, is find out the country where you want to ship in which zone it is. Because now that will change the price. So I gave you here in the slide you can see that this is how USPS, the American Post, is doing their zoning and then the price per zone per weight. But once we get the, the document from, from Iposita, from Idelfons, please go and find your zone, find the actual weight, find how much it will cost you, yeah? And then once you have that, you will know how much it will cost to ship to America this product. But that's not enough. You know, in our opportunity uh, sessions, yeah, when I was when when I was browsing the sellers that compete that you will compete with, you also need to find out are they offering free shipping, and how fast is their shipping, because otherwise the price doesn't mean anything. If you put if you're cheaper if you're the same price and you think they're good but you ship within two weeks because you use the the slow one, and the other one is is doing next day delivery, he's going to win the crowd or she's going to win the crowd. So opportunity price, you have really to compare apple with apples. Similar product in the same weight, the same flavor, and at the same logistic speed. And then I can fight or not. Yeah? So that's a little bit the ID. This is your homework. Those who want to come for the second session, we will be happy to give you the next advanced course that will really, like we have a model of calculating. We have an Excel file, and then we sit down, we put the fees, and then you get the actual cost and the actual opportunity and then you can decide. So that's session two or, or workshop of, uh, of e-commerce engineering. Uh, thank you, Sandra. Maybe uh, for the sake of time, we can take questions later on the chat or on the WhatsApp group. We will be happy to, to answer those questions. It took uh, almost one hour, one hour extra as planned. We hope that this was beneficial to you guys. Is that okay? And maybe there is uh, one final thing uh, Moroccan way is that do you understand volumetric weight already is all good yeah. if you don't understand we don't let you go out of the room <laughs> understood yeah excellent that's the basis of the biggest base of misunderstanding and I think also let's let us just repeat we're available for you to get the prices from Iposita the prices from other providers but also the opportunity the research with the software Please uh, link back to us, and if you, some of you want to stay another half an hour, we can give you some, some product uh, research opportunity, we can do it together another half an hour. Beside that, we want to thank you very much, those online and, and, and those who came here physically, and hopefully you can make the best out of this knowledge and increase your sales, increase your export, and then give more opportunity to our people here. Yeah? Morakoze, thank you very much.